Hey, it's Alyssa, and today I'll be demonstrating how I painted this clownfish in acrylics. This video is part one because those white blobs will eventually become two more clownfish. I just decided to split this painting up into two videos, so you can stay tuned for that second one. But for now, here's how I painted this guy. My first step here is going to be to paint all of my fish white. This is a really good tip that I picked up from another YouTube artist. What it basically does is just give me a clean slate to paint over so that my oranges and the other colors that I use later for my fish will show up without the blue of the background showing through them. The next step here is to get those bubbles in. The first one that I'm doing here, I have a little bit slower so you can see how I'm painting that on. I have a video of drawing bubbles digitally, so if you're interested, there will be a link in the video description. One thing that I'm doing here is making sure that the blue of the background is visible in the middle of the bubble. This makes them look clear. If I painted them completely black and white, they look a lot like floating marbles, and that's not what I'm looking for there. For those little bubbles, I'm just doing white dots and then putting a tiny black dot in there for shadow. That just gives the idea of smaller bubbles there. I didn't really have it planned out in the beginning how many bubbles I was going to do, but I just kept adding them in clusters until it looked like enough. This is one of those things where you don't want them to be u too uniform or evenly spaced out or they won't look real. I'm trying to keep them random and random groups like they would be in water. And moving on to the clownfish. I'm starting with this color that is definitely not perfect, but I can blend other colors into it while it's still wet. And I use that technique a lot when I paint. It's a really easy way to blend and build up colors. What I'm mainly focusing on here is staying in my outline and building up color. It doesn't need to be perfect on the first try and I can always go over it again as many times as I want. Keeping the lighter yellows and oranges towards the top of the fish while the bottom is the darker red gives it dimension. I don't want it to look too round, but there is a bit of that shading there. The beginning stage of the fish is really just layering my oranges until I, I get them approximately the right colors that I'm looking for. Again, using the wet paint into wet paint technique to blend and build up some of the lighter colors at the top of the fish. Now here I'm pulling in some of that blue. If I left the white straight white, it would look really flat. So this does give it some dimension. And I'm using the same blue that's in the background so that the fish looks like it's actually swimming in water with blue around it. Just blending that out. 
Here I'm also adding some highlights on this fin. It really doesn't get bright enough until I went back over it at the end. If the fin is pretty much the same color as the body of the fish, it'll blend in against the rest of the body and you won't really, really be able to see it. By adding the yellow, it really makes it stand out. And the same is true for these bottom fins. If I left them as light as they are now, that just does not look right. I need to go back later and put them in shadow so it looks like they're under the fish. One thing that was actually a little bit challenging was putting in those black lines. They're really thin, so I have to use a really light hand to paint them in, but keeping my hand controlled and steady so that they'll come out straight, that can be a bit of a challenge. One thing that I like about painting is it's really easy to fix mistakes. If I go too far with a line, I can just paint over it or wipe it off if it's still wet. putting in the dark of the eye. I always like doing eyes because that's what really tends to bring the subject to life. The, this fish doesn't have highlights in its eyes, but when I'm drawing, say, a dog, the highlights in the eyes are what really make it look real. That fin is a really good example of why I put white down before I start. That first layer of orange looked pretty brown because you could see that the blue was coming through. After a couple layers, it's fine, but just saves time in the beginning. Now here's the stage where it's getting closer to being done and I jump around here a lot and fix up the random things that I notice. Using my fingers to wipe paint off. Probably not great technique there, but it works. Didn't really like how those top fins were looking, so I just painted over them and started over. Getting more shape in that face by adding some lighter colors on top.
Here I'm darkening the blue on those white stripes and that's one of the steps that really helps it to not look so flat. Another thing that worked about this painting is that blue and orange are complementary colors, meaning that they're opposite. When you put them together, they stand in a really stark contrast. In this case, the orange really pops out against the blue and adds a nice vivid effect. Finishing up the face and adding the final details to the fish. And that's all for this guy. Thanks for watching.